Hello, fellow rebel capitalists. Hope you're well. Breaking news. The Atlanta Fed drops their GDP forecast down to 0%. 0%. So what this means is we could be headed toward a recession. Now, we've been talking about this for the last week. This doesn't come in as any news to the rebel capitalists, but we've got inflation running hot. We've got potential negative GDP growth, and this means 1970s stagflation, inflationary recession. The odds of this coming to fruition are increasing by the day. Let's get into this post. This came out, I believe, today, uh, January 28th. And the initial GDP Now model, this is, again, for the Atlanta Fed, uh, their latest estimate is 0.1%, so not exactly 0%. <laughs> it's about a, about a close uh, as you can possibly get. So this latest estimate came out January 28th. Uh, that would be today. So they've continually ratcheted their expectations down. Let me see. I, I saw this originally on Zero Hedge. Here we go. So this is a chart that I'll get into in just a moment. And it looks like, uh, okay, they didn't have, I was trying to get to a chart like this that showed their previous forecasts for, uh, and what they're forecasting, by the way, is Q1 of 2022. So I was wondering what their forecasts were maybe back in December. I'm guessing it was a lot higher than basically 0%. But uh, as of right now, really, really come down. Uh, it may go down even further. Who knows? It may go negative. But look at what the blue chip consensus is. And this is a range. It's a range of top 10 and bottom 10 average forecasts from, let's say, economists talking heads. So it goes anywhere from basically 5% down to 1.75%. And keep in mind, this is real GDP growth. 5%. Like you got to be kidding me. 5% real GDP growth. So what that would mean is, assuming we've got inflation still at 7%, uh, they're expecting GDP growth at 12%. <laughs> so for I, trailing 12 months, I believe, is how they measure that. But that's just completely insane uh, that you would think that the U.S. economy was growing at that clip. No way. So uh, this is going to be very interesting, to say the least, that if we do see the economy going into a recession or a contraction in real terms, then what on earth does the Fed do in March when as of a couple of days ago, they said that they were going to continue to move forward with their plan to not only reduce quantitative easing down to zero, but then to start raising interest rates and quite possibly start doing quantitative tightening as well. This could mean that they're doing this at the worst possible time if you're looking at it through the lens of just kind of short term for the economy. Now, I think eventually it's got to happen. You've got to get the drug addict off the drug, the monetary heroin. But uh, in the short term, that means that there's some significant pain here. And uh, if the Fed is raising rates, even though the economy is going into recession, uh, you're going to get that pain sooner than later. And so we Every day that goes on, there's more and more drama around what on earth the Fed is going to do and what type of predicament are they going to be in if we have the unemployment. So let's think this through. We've got stock market crashing, let's say, because interest rates are going up. Therefore, purchasing power goes down. I would assume that means that we go from a labor shortage, to quite possibly a labor surplus, because we have the... Um, labor force participation going up. It's it's very, very low right now. And I think that's because so many people can retire. If your 401k doubles, if your crypto assets you know, go up 10 times, 100 times, whatever it is, then this gives you a, 
far more flexibility to retire than if you just really can't depend on any of your assets. So in that world of the stock market going down 25%, cryptos uh, decreasing in price, I think that you've got a lot of people that come out of early retirement and a lot of young people that have made tremendous gains on paper. Uh, they suffer losses and they say, okay, well, it was fun while it lasted, but now I've got to go back to work. And what they find is that we go from 10 million job openings down to 4 million or something that would be considered uh, extremely low for the U.S. economy. And this is just uh, a feedback loop that just keeps getting worse and worse and worse because then, you know, what does that do for economic forecasts and what does that do for the Fed? If you have the market coming down, if you have unemployment going up, and but yet you still have inflation going up, what do you do? Because the Fed's two mandates, explicit mandates, are inflation and unemployment. So if unemployment is going up, and inflation is going up at the same time, the, the Fed's got nothing, absolutely nothing, zero. They can either try to support and bring down the unemployment rate by being more dovish and accommodative, and then you risk exacerbating inflation, or you try to tackle inflation and you exacerbate the unemployment rate. It's just, uh, talk about a rock in a hard place. So. This is uh, a story that's getting more and more and more interesting as the days go by. And if we continue to see downward pressure on the stock market, if we continue to see downward pressure on the economy, what on earth does that do to the Fed's decision in March? And if they do backpedal, whoo boy, you can imagine what would happen to gold, what would happen to the dollar, and what most likely would happen to those tech stocks as well. And then what would most likely happen to the rate of consumer price inflation. So definitely something that we need to watch very, very closely moving forward. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Always stand up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. We'll see you.